If you give Bubba Wallace and Noah Gregson some time, they'll definitely find someone they can annoy on their own. Both are skilled at that. However, the Daytona 500 food fight is currently being fought by the sponsors of the NASCAR Cup Series drivers. They are evidently unwilling to meet each other halfway because their disagreement is solely about beef. And so what exactly happened? Let's find out. Hello NASCAR fam and welcome back to NASCAR Live. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button and let's begin. Since 1973, when it landed its logo on the Chevys of Benny Parsons and Nels Miller, McDonald's has sponsored Cup Series cars in NASCAR, and the world's best-known burger chain celebrated its first win with Jimmy Spencer in 1994. The corporation has been a primary sponsor over 500 times, and Bubba Wallace is their current representative. Because Hardee's departed in 1997 and Burger King left in 2015, McDonald's has essentially had the NASCAR burger space to itself recently. However, that began to change last year when Wendy's sponsored Noah Gregson at Talladega. Wendy's is back this weekend with Gregson in the Daytona 500, and the other chain is not happy. The consequence was a McFlurry of verbal jabs. This weekend, Wendy's and McDonald's have taken notice of one other's wraps on cup cars for the Daytona 500, and things are getting heated. It's hardly on the level of Ross Chastain versus Denny Hamlin, but it is a duel of heavyweights with a combined annual sales total of more than $50 billion, according to QSR. In terms of sales volume, Wendy's is around one-fourth that of McDonald's, but it nevertheless made a big show of it. In contrast to its competitors, who decorated Bubba Wallace's Toyota with a golden arches pattern, Wendy's covered Noah Gregson's Chevy with a delectable-looking burger. In a statement to Sports Business Journal, Wendy's marketing executive Carl Laredo said, We're proud of Noah Gregson's number 42, the beef car, and fans have been praising the paint scheme on social media all week. For our McBland rivals, we are unable to make the same claim. We don't scrimp here at Wendy's. In response, 2311 Racing points to the scoring pylon. Steve Lawletta, the leader of Bubba Wallace's team 2311 Racing, responded. Lawletta posted on social media, Beauty is always in the eye of the beholder, so appreciate your thoughts, at Carl Laredo. I can assure you that 2311 Racing focuses on results, therefore we're fairly pleased with our 11th place qualifying finish from last night. Wallace did qualify in 11th place, 17 positions ahead of Gregson, who is starting his first complete Cup Series season after making 18 appearances with three teams last year. Following their fights on Thursday, Wallace was placed in position 15 on the starting grid and Gregson in position 22. The recent period of success for Bubba Wallace has been extremely impressive. He appears to be on a promising track after picking up his second victory with 2311 Racing last year. Despite the fact that we are unable to predict what will happen next, we do know that he is filthy wealthy. Wallace recently admitted that his most recent big shopping spree may have cost him about $78,000 in an interview. Wallace said, It had to be a watch. I think I just bought an Audemars Piguet code 1159. My wife Amanda, we just got married on New Year's, always advised me to enjoy the things I already have before I acquire new stuff. In essence, it's a code phrase for stop buying so many dang watches. Not only Wallace flaunts pricey timepieces on the NASCAR track, when it comes to expensive watches, his employer, Michael Jordan, is on another level. During Wallace's Nashville run last year, the renowned baller once turned up with a watch worth roughly twice what Wallace paid for it. Jordan was wearing a manually wound Erwerk UR220 watch produced in Switzerland. The watch was made available to the market in relatively restricted quantities, only 10 of these stunning antiques have ever been created. Unsurprisingly, the price of this gem was close to $155,000. It appears that the NBA legend's taste in watches has been handed down to his driver as well. Monster Brewing and 2311 Racing bring the Beast to NASCAR. The Beast has now been set free. The Beast Unleashed paint scheme will be used on the number 45 Toyota Camry TRD for a number of races during the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season and Monster Brewing and 2311 Racing have unveiled the first look at it. A special reveal event was held today at Monster's Worldwide Headquarters in Corona, California in advance of the Beast's track debut this weekend at Fontana's Auto Club Speedway. Tyler Reddick, who will drive the fierce new-looking Toyota, was among those in attendance. This is all really cool, says Reddick. I love the time and effort that I put into my racing, and there are definitely times after a really long day that it's nice to crack open a cold one, 
and now I can do that with the Beast Unleashed. That's awesome. As of now, my favorite flavor to start is Mean Green, and I'm looking forward to trying out the other flavors. And now I get to debut the Beast this weekend at Fontana here in California. With the race being in such close proximity to Monsters Global HQ, it worked out to where we got to unveil the Beast scheme here today before getting on track this weekend. Really cool to unveil the scheme with all the employees today. The veteran Kurt Busch made a surprise cameo alongside him as he handed the young Reddick the controls of the number 45. We got the right kid, we got the right guy, says Bush. Tyler is an excellent talent. There are those little things that make a big difference in racing, and I want to continue to help Tyler hone his skills. To me, Tyler Reddick is like a young Kyle Larson, where he has that dirt racing background where, when they drop the green, he goes at it 101%. I'm there to try and provide him with those veteran key points sooner rather than later. Denny Hamlin knows talent. He found Reddick, and we're going to make him a superstar. Denny Hamlin, 2311 racing team owner, added, We went after Tyler, no question. I mean, he's a franchise talent in my mind. He won three races last year, and he can win everywhere. He's so well-rounded that I just believe he's going to carry this franchise into the next decade and beyond. We plan on being around for a long time, and there are going to be a lot of races and championships won with this number 45 car. Reynold Aparicio, vice president of Monster Equity Brands at Monster Brewing, attended the unveiling as well. I'd seen pictures of the new paint job, but seeing it in person for the first time was something else, he added. The beast has been unleashed, and the fans are going to enjoy it. I can't wait for this weekend's race, and Tyler will look great on that track. 2311 Racing was created by NBA legend Michael Jordan and three-time Daytona 500 winner Denny Hamlin in 2020. In the 2021 Daytona 500 at Daytona International Speedway, the team made their NASCAR Cup Series debut with the choice of rising NASCAR star Bubba Wallace to pilot the number 23 Toyota Camry TRD. On October 4, 2021, Wallace won the Cup Series for the first time in team history, becoming only the second African-American to do so. This victory also gave 2311 its first Cup Series triumph. Kurt Busch drove the number 45 Toyota Camry TRD for 2311, which became a two-car organization in 2022. Bush's victory at Kansas Speedway in May 2022 gave 2311 its first-ever playoff berth. Tyler Reddick will be driving the number 45 Toyota in 2023, while Bubba Wallace will be driving the number 23 Toyota. Four drivers to watch at Auto Club Speedway The Auto Club Speedway will serve as the true testing of the 2023 field, notwithstanding how significant the Daytona 500 is on the Cup Series schedule. Despite producing a thrilling spectacle, Super Speedway Racing doesn't provide much insight into the drivers and teams to watch at non-drafting ovals early in the season. Last year, we witnessed surprise competitors take the top spots in Fontana's first non-drafting points race with the new next-gen car. Eric Jones was in contention the entire day, but Tyler Reddick led the most laps and Austin Sindrick earned the pole position. Even yet, Kyle Larson, the reigning champion, took the victory and took home the checkered flag. It's impossible to predict the type of race we'll see this time around because teams and drivers have both learned so much about the next-gen car over the last year. Will the elite teams rule the two-mile track, or will the 400 miles once more be packed with parity? Before Auto Club Speedway gets converted into a short track, here are three drivers to keep an eye on in the final race. Kyle Larson Kyle Larson has had an up-and-down history at Auto Club Speedway. The 30-year-old has two victories and two runners-up places in Fontana, including last year's victory. But he hasn't been in the top two when he hasn't placed first, and has instead fallen below the top ten. But of the three tracks, Larson has triumphed on a number of occasions at the two-mile ovals at Auto Club and Michigan. It is obvious from the victory column that the various lanes and the opportunity to run up into the wall are right in his wheelhouse. When he started on the pole and led for 110 laps to win in 2017, Larson's 2022 victory at Fontana wasn't quite the same dominant performance. As opposed to this, the number 5 Chevrolet didn't take the lead until lap 167, after which he did so for 28 of the next 33 laps. In California, Larson can never be ruled out. Kyle Busch Kyle Busch appears to be the man on a mission. The 37-year-old placed third in the clash and was leading the Daytona 500 until many late cautions came out. Early positive momentum is important as Busch begins his tenure at Richard Childress Racing, and all indications are that it will continue this Sunday in Fontana. 
Last year, the number 8 Chevrolet was the fastest car in the field at Auto Club until a cut tire and ensuing crash on lap 152 destroyed the day. Despite the change in drivers, Randall Burnett remains the crew chief. Bush will be difficult to defeat if Burnett can duplicate their speed from 2022. Bush consistently placed in the top three at Fontana from 2018 through 2020, including the 2019 race, which he won after dominating both stages and led 134 of the 200 laps. Bush has four victories and 10 top three finishes in his career at Auto Club Speedway. His 9.8 average track finish places him third all time, only behind Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards, and first among active Cup Series drivers. Simply said, Bush will earn you a nice finish in Fontana if you give him a quick vehicle. Tyler Reddick Tyler Reddick drove the number 8 Chevrolet to two stage wins and the most laps led last year. Reddick would almost certainly win the 2022 race at Auto Club Speedway if it weren't for the aforementioned blown tire on lap 152. The 27-year-old is trying to turn those mishaps into consistent trophies now that he has three victories under his credit and is driving for a new squad in 2311 racing. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos.